All right, welcome everyone to this workshop brought to you by learn.wordpress.org. Um, this is the uh, seven habits of highly accessible web content with Alicia St. Rose. Um, Alicia is a contributor to the accessibility team on the open source project, and she is an organizer of the South Central Coast WordPress Adventure Group in California. Um, she is passionate about WordPress and inspiring those who use it, which is why she's here today. Um, so that said, I'm, I'll be handing this off to Alicia to share her presentation, The Seven Habits of Highly Accessible Web Content. Now I will stop my screen sharing so she can share hers. Oh, you're muted, Alicia. Thank you for the introduction and make sure I'm sharing the right screen. I am. Does everyone, can everyone see a screen? Can you see my yes. screen? Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me do this. All right. Hello, everybody. I'm Alicia in Santa Barbara, and it's great to do one of these um, Learn WordPress Talks. I've done this particular one before, um, but I kind of, I feel like I dialed it in that first time. Uh, this time, I'm actually going to align accessibility principles and tips with Stephen Covey's seven habits of highly successful people. That's what I planned the first time, but this time I'm really going to do it. So uh, if people are not aware of this book, uh, you may not have read it. You may have heard about it. It's a classic, and it was written by a man named Stephen Covey. Uh, what his premise is, is that a lot of success is based on character, not personality. He noticed that a lot of people were actually burning out and not being truly successful because they felt like what mattered was externals, not the internal value that they had, their character, what they have, um, what they uh, evolved inside to, to, to create um, something greater for themselves. And so I feel like that accessibility, a lot of times people look for the outside fixes or something uh, external to help with the website, but it's actually an internal thing. It's something that you can start and you can actually begin with very, very simple steps. And I can apply them to these seven steps. So what are the seven steps? Um, first, be proactive. Uh, this one needs to take responsibility, as, as according to Stephen Covey. Take responsibility for your life and actions and focus on what you can control rather than being reactive to external circumstances. Okay, that's one of them. Um, the next habit, uh oh, let me make sure I'm actually using this. Um, begin with the end in mind. Of course, that means before you start something, think about where you're going to end. So as far as accessibility is concerned, you'll probably want to know about, you know, you want to know what the actual, um, a, a, an accessible website, what that entails before you begin. Uh, put first things first, prioritize tasks and activities based on importance and align them with your goals, ensuring that you spend time on what truly matters, okay? Habit number four is think win-win. That was to seek a mutually beneficial solution and, and also interactions and collaboration with others instead of competing with others. And you bring everyone in together so that you can build something greater. Uh, habit number five, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Listen empathetically to others, learn from their perspectives, and then you can communicate with them better. And habit number six is to synergize. It's the em embrace diversity and work collaboratively to create solutions that are greater than the sum of their parts, valuing teamwork and creative cooperation. And finally, habit number seven is sharpen the saw. That means just keep learning stuff. You're never going to learn it all. You will always be on a path to continue learning. So how are we going to apply these to Accessibility. Let's see if we can do that. Okay, so we have our first habit is pro to be proactive. Familiar, familiarize yourself with accessibility guidelines. Hold on a minute. There we go. Such as WCAG 2.1 and understand the basics of accessible content. Now, a lot of people, I'm not sure um, whether you came to this talk and it was your first 
uh, exposure to accessibility and you're just curious about what it is, and things like WCAG kind of confuse you, and that's okay. But just getting familiar with these things, knowing the term already is already a step ahead. And then just some basics for content creation. Uh, there is, whoops, there's a course that I want to highly recommend. And um, uh, I believe we can put a link in the chat for this. Uh, the, there'll be links I can throw in later too, if, if we miss that. Uh, this course is uh, presented by EDX and it says here it starts on June 23rd. That's when I actually went on the site. Whenever you log in, it says you could start the course that day. And it says it ends at a certain day, but you can actually technically keep taking it as it's your own pace. And you're going to learn first and foremost, what people with multiple different diverse disabilities, how they deal with the web. And it will be definitely a wake up call. And it does go into some technical stuff too. Uh, the second thing you want to familiar yourself familiarize yourself with is something called the overlay fact sheet. In case someone doesn't know what an overlay is, an overlay is a plugin that you've reached for with the promise that it's going to make your website accessible by just installing the plugin and then maybe some JavaScript's going to like make it work. That is not going to actually solve the problem for someone with disabilities. It's actually going to create problems because they already have assisted technologies to read your website. And this overlay fact sheet will really lay out the argument against using those. And to be fair, to be just a literal, is that if someone is arriving on your website and has to use an overlay to get to your content, they had to get on the web in the first place and they didn't need that overlay. So think about that. So you actually put a gate to your content for them because they were able to get to your website through Google and all that stuff. They don't have overlays. So definitely check that out. Um, second, um, another aspect of being proactive is to use the accessibility features that are provided in the WordPress editor. There are things like the heading styles and descriptive link text. Now I'm just dropping some of these terms right now, but we'll go into more detail as we go through this these habits. Okay, so, uh, the, the WordPress block editor is very robust now. It is not in any way what it was in 2018 when people opened it up and said, I'm never going back there again. I would implore anyone who has had that traumatic experience to revisit it, please. Um, and it is perfectly fine to build am amazing websites with it, okay? And so it has features in the block editor that your content, when you when you create content, you can create accessible content. So you don't have to go very far. Uh, so actually, one of the things would be like the header. Um, if you've seen these H2s and H3s and all that, those are headings and they have a specific purpose. It's not a design purpose. It's a specific purpose for someone who's using a screen reader. And um, we'll get a little further into that. Also, um, descriptive link text, as I was as stated in an aspect of this um, uh, habit, is that putting things like click here for something and linking click here, that's not really helpful because a lot of people who use screen readers will also pull the links out so they can just scan those. Okay, so you want to you want to actually create links like this that actually say what the link does. So just remember something like that is very important. There's context. But just remember context when you're thinking about your content. So being a proactive thinker, you're going to really, really think, how is this going to feel for someone who doesn't know what I'm linking to? And as you can see, DayQ does a good job of this, of course. So another uh, habit one, make sure any media files such as images or videos have appropriate alternative text that conveys the meaning and context of the content. For instance, in WordPress already built in, when you 
use an image block, there is in the sidebar, the box for your alternative text. So you can easily describe the image that you just in, uh, uploaded into your, your content or your page or your post. Also, when it comes to captioning videos, my friend Meryl is definitely a spokesperson for that. So I wanted to grab one of her videos. Uh, the captions on the videos that you are making in YouTube or Vimeo, please double check them because you cannot depend on AI or artificial intelligence to be intelligent enough to know exactly what you're saying. So that is uh, definitely do not snooze on that because it could be really embarrassing actually in some cases. So habit number two, begin with the end in mind. So set clear accessibility goals for your content based on the WCAG guidelines. Now, I mentioned this earlier about WCAG and it just sounds like some kind of weird cyborg term that you don't wanna have anything to do with. And if you ended up on this page, you'd feel like the same way because this is the re quick reference of the official WCAG, um, the Web Accessibility Initiative. I visited this when I first learned about accessibility and I quickly went and surfed somewhere else because this was very overwhelming. This is just talking about non-text content and it's the, there's page after page after page. This is gonna really overwhelm you. So someone has actually created a more, um, hold on, I have a drop down. okay. Uh, a more easy, easier way to check if you're marking off all of the uh, accessibility things that you need to be aware of. A simple checklist, uh, you, you can check as you go, you can um, click these drop downs, toggle these drop downs, and it'll tell you in plain English what you're supposed to be doing or what you're supposed to be looking for. So. There's a lot of things that happen in a website that's accessible, but once again, if it's just coded correctly um, with a, a, a nice clean theme, and maybe you're not using a, a page builder that has a lot of like accessibility issues, you don't have to worry about most of this. It's already happening because just a cleanly, nicely, intelligently coded HTML website is already accessible from the get-go. It really is. So habit number two, begin with the end in mind. Also plan and structure your content to ensure it can be navigated easily by keyboard users and assistive technologies. So when you're about to get a new website, sometimes people go off and they find a theme that they like, or someone has suggested some theme, or someone's building a website that's custom. One thing that you want to do just quickly, the simplest thing, is to hit the tab button. And you really want to see a little button show up at the top left or somewhere at the top of the website that says skip to content. That one like comfort thing that you're providing for someone is if you cannot use a mouse, you are going to be navigating through the website with your keyboard. And so you don't want to have them go through the entire navigation and everything to get all the way down to the bottom of the footer. <laughs> so that button is a very, very important because it's going to allow them to skip the navigation if they don't want to go there. If they've read something in the middle of your page, which is like this blazing headline and they want to get to it uh, immediately. So you definitely want to, um, you want to do that. Uh, the other thing is you can use Google Drive, which I think is important uh, as a tool to pre-create your content. Creating content in a block editor is a little bit difficult and it also messes up with your flow. So if you actually plan and use the right heading structure, as you can see in the sidebar, it's already lined up for Google. Uh, in Google, they do the heading structure to make your outline. And that is a good example of what's going to be happening when someone uses a screen reader. So you can literally cut and paste this entire document into your page and it will disperse into the appropriate blocks. 
So you don't have to worry about rebuilding with blocks. You just paste and, and uh, cut and paste and it will do that. Okay, habit number three, put first things first. Address the low hanging fruit of accessibility. Um, or address the low hanging accessibility fruit. So this one, this section here, there are gonna be a few tips that you can do like almost immediately on your content because these are the things that really bring a, um, raise a red flag when someone looks at a site to see if it's accessible or not. So we're gonna get to those. Uh, this is a very, very complex um, uh, image on my slideshow, but it's just, I'm gonna like pull a few things out of it. This is uh, Web Aims 1 million and every year they do an assessment of the top 1 million websites to find out how accessible or what are the major uh, accessible issues that happen or accessibility issues that happen. And low contrast is the top, missing alternative text for images, empty links, missing input labels, empty buttons, and missing document language. Now I'm gonna go through those briefly and um, so that you can know what they are and you can look for them. So low contrast is very easy. You can tell you can't read the side on the left, which is like, like really faint gray on this dark maroon, but white on maroon is a little better. You can read that. So you can go through your website and, and see uh, almost like just glancing what would work. Um, alternative text for image. This one's a little bit um, tricky because if it's a direct dec decorative image, you don't have to put any alternative text because that would just be a waste of someone's time to have to have their screen reader read out that there was like a filigree here or <laughs> filigree there. But if the image actually has something to do with the content, is illustrating the content in some way, you do want an alt tag or alt description in the alt tag. Uh, then there was empty links. Empty links. A lot of times this happens when you use your social media icons or a basket for something, this empty link has no words. So a screen reader can't actually see. And if you, you can look here where I've um, done a little screen grab of the actual HTML, you can see there's no words there. <laughs> there's literally just an icon basket and empty space uh, span with nothing in it. So that's all geek speak to some people, but basically there's not a word that can be on a button so that a screen reader can actually read that that's a button. And it was a very important um, button. It was the shopping basket. So then the other thing, there's missing form input labels. I've been guilty of this in the past and um, I don't wanna actually do it anymore and <laughs> stop. It just looked so cool when you didn't have a label on top of something like this because it was all inside the box and you didn't have to worry. Um, unfortunately, what's inside that box um, probably can't be read by a screen reader unless there's a lot of CSS or coding trickery and most of the time there's not. So better to have email label at the top of that field. Otherwise, no one knows what it's for. They get there and they, it, there's a field and it just says sign up. So um, they'll probably be wary of that. Uh, the empty buttons. This is gonna be ter terrifying. It's a lot of red here. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of red here because I used what we'll talk about a little bit further down the line. I used a, a browser extension called Wave to see the accessibility issues on this particular website, which will be revealed in the next three slides too. Um, they have what are called an, uh, an empty, um, empty button. So there's a button that acts as something that you do on the page. And when you uh, do something on the page, you should actually make a button and not a link. And that is a specific HTML tag. And so when there's nothing in it, then the button's not read out either. So you can't really do anything. There's also, as we can see, a lot of other very bad errors on this website. Um, they have, instead of a button, they've placed an SVG graphic. So it's just a graphic. So no one's gonna be able to read that or know what to do. And they're not gonna be able to clap for this article on Medium. So that's what we were looking at. And that's why I've heard that Medium's not accessible. I can see now clearly that people are left out of a lot of the fun stuff that can happen on Medium. So 
Uh, and finally, the one of the top seven things that are uh, issues with the one million top one million websites is a missing document language. You know, you're going to have to do some geeky digging to do to find this, but you can just easily do it with the um, inspector to uh, to look into the uh, uh, HTML code. But at the very top, or you can do a view source. But at the very top of your page you should see some kind of language. It should say HTML lang something, okay? And if it doesn't say that, if that's not there, then a screen reader doesn't know when to change the language from the website. For instance, if there's a quote in French and the, and the website started off in English, it would be able to know that. Um, and if there's no language, at all, it's going to be it's going to have a hard time because a lot of the screen readers can actually speak in all the different languages that people all over the world use. So you want to actually be able to do that. So that's just something you would look at, and you don't have to fix it, but you would probably avoid themes or things that don't have that. So if you don't see that there, you can ask the developer. And um, I have been showing you some HTML code, and I want to show you how I got it. <laughs> So you can look under the hood at some of these things that I was showing you by going, this is in Chrome, you can go and click the three dots up next to your, um, your icon, your, your picture icon, and then you'll get to the more tools, and then you can hit the developer tools, and then you'll get this, um, you'll get this uh, uh, window that opens up either on the side for you or at the bottom of your page where you can look and highlight and click on things in that HTML and it'll show you where they are on the page. Another way to do it is just right click on anything but an image and you can see the inspect and you can get the same thing. So these are it. These, if you can do these six things, I'm not sure if I said seven, but these six things right here, if you can just ad address those, those are the things that are screaming out to say my website's not accessible. And you don't actually, you don't need a plugin to do that. You don't need an overlay to do that. You just need to think ahead and, and, and look at the, the, the theme that you have. And if you have a theme that doesn't have a language, you can have someone, you can have a developer quickly add that for you. Okay, so habit number four, think win-win. This one is don't just think about, um, you know, content that is going to be uh, on your desktop, think about things that are um, going to be available for all devices. So use responsive design themes, make sure your content is accessible on different devices and screen sizes. There's so many different ones that you can't just say, I'm going to make a website for the iPhone. I'm just going to make a website for this. There's there's I don't know, 60 or 70 different device window sizes at this point. So it just has to fluidly move back and forth. And you'll know it when you see it. You know, this is only a small smattering of whatever. And one of the things that I, I there's no surprise here, and I'm not very shy about it, but my favorite theme is Generate Press. Uh, generate Press out of the box is like really accessible. Uh, it's a really fast theme and it's definitely responsive. And in addition to that, um, there's also uh, the generate blocks, which you can get and extend the block editor in WordPress. And um, so it's amazing that the, the, the generate people are also the most helpful people <laughs> when you go to their forum. They're just always, always very helpful and very responsive. Not just their theme, them themselves are responsive. And then finally, I have to point out, because I'm a fangirl, I have to admit it, I'm an Apple fangirl. I've been that way for like decades. Apple starts off with any product thinking of accessibility first. And they just released uh, in May, I believe, or at least uh, the first quarter of this year, they just released amazing, more advances on their already um, amazing array of accessibility features on their devices. And so I would ac actually suggest that you go in and check out these, um, this website, the uh, Apple at a, um, uh, at a, I can't even remember where I had this. 
Um, anyway, look for the, just go to the Apple website and go check out their accessibility uh, because it's amazing. And, you know, um, what the, the only like, blind deaf person who's a Harvard Law graduate used Apple devices to actually get her through college. Her name's Haben Gurma. If you've ever heard of her, um, Google her. She's amazing. She is blind deaf and she's a Harvard Law graduate and Apple helped her get through college. So win-win, make sure the content can be resized without losing functionality or readability. Now this is different than being a responsive website. This means that you're able to zoom into the website and it doesn't break apart. So you can zoom up to 400%. That's where you need to be going in the zoom to test your website to make sure that it's actually not, you know, the button's not overlapping another div or, or this image or things like that. And this is like, obviously the wordpress.org website is not doing any of that stuff. It's perfectly fine at 400%. All right, our fifth habit, seek first to understand and then to be understood. Understand the requirements for specific disabilities, such as colorblindness, cognitive disabilities, or motor, motor, motor impairments. Um, so there, once again, I'm going to show this slide because this course at EDX is really going to help you with this habit. <laughs> You're really going to see people who uh, can't use their hands, some people who have to actually puff on the keyboard with a straw because they can't use anything, but they're they, they, they're like a quadriplegic. Um, you're just going to see all this and you're going to see there's real humans who want to actually access your content and you'll start really having this concern for them when you, uh, it's like 25% of the population is even sight impaired. So you don't want to leave those people out. And speaking of, there are a few tools, like for instance, um, who can use, I'm going to actually click on this and check it out. So you, any color that you put on your website, uh, you can see here what uh, sight impairment, what colors they're seeing on the side here, or if it's blurry, or if it's like something like, like some people have this spot in the middle. So you can see that's an amazing tool. Um, also, this one, you can upload any image that you have, and you can click, and you can see that's what that looks like to someone with protonopia. So you, you, start, you start to change, you know, like if red's important uh, with important content, it's not gonna work out for this person. <laughs> so, so you start to, to realize that uh, even your color combinations might be completely missed by someone with some of these impairments. All right, learn how people use assistive, assistive technologies on the web when you seek first to understand and to be understood. So I had said something about people pulling out heading structure and links so they can scan the page. Uh, I don't have Windows, but I do have a Mac. And I can give you an example because if you have a Mac, you already have your screen reader built in. Uh, and it's it's excellent. So if I were to rely on the screen reader and I were scanning the wordpress.org website for all the links on the page, because that's really all I'm looking for, because I need to go and, and out into the website like everyone else, it's very easy for me, for me to figure out where those links go because they have been, the linked text actually says what they're doing. Now, if you think back to a website or so a friend's website, your own website, or even a major company's website. And they had a sentence that said, download our PDF, click here. And the words click here were the ones that were linked. So if someone's pulling this bar off to the side and the whole page has all these different down PDF downloads to click here and get, that's all they're gonna see on this panel is click here, click here, click here, click here, click here, click here. That's not fair. 
<laughs> all actually that's that's impossible to figure it out it's like playing that game where you put the nuts under the under the shell and you try to figure out which one's which so you don't want to do that to people you really don't so think about it think about this is what they're doing and these are being read off to them uh and so then the heading structure as well h1 whoops hit the key h1 is the title of the page h2 further divides up that content into other like sub topics. And if there's a subtopic under what you've put in uh, H2, then that's an H3. It will be read out by the screen reader, just like that. It will say the heading topic, H1, WordPress, blah, blah, blah. And it's gonna say that. So they'll know in their mind, they're getting an outline of the page. They're able to scan the page just like everyone else. Uh, seek first to understand and then be understood by testing your content with assistive technologies and accessibility tools, evaluation tools, to gain insights into potential barriers. Now, these are for the window folks and I don't know how they work. I've, I've only seen people using them, but, and then this might be a more pricey um, alternative for people who are just putting up their own personal website <laughs> to go and you know, get JAWS or NVDA, which are the main uh, screen readers that are used on Windows. Uh, JAWS tends to be the more pricier uh, version and NVDA is what uh, most people have that one. So whatever is buggy or weird or what needs to be addressed uh, should be geared toward NVDA first, in my opinion, um, because more people use it. So like, like there's like a low hanging fruit for screen readers basically. <laughs> so um, you can always sometimes Google and say, how does uh, JAWS and NVDA approach this kind of thing? Like the prime and double prime for uh, numbers. Um, some of them, a lot of these both, I, I believe both of these don't even count those. So you would just do inches and feet instead of doing that because it doesn't make any sense to a screen reader. Uh, there are also, more um, uh, accessible or approachable as far as price wise for uh, things to do to check out your websites would be the accessibility insights and wave um, accessibility uh, evaluation tool is uh, they are browser extensions and I believe you can put them on I know I have mine on Chrome you can put them on Firefox you probably put them on all browsers and this digital alley uh, this person has created a blog post that has, let's see, did I get that? Um, 43 browser extensions. So uh, you can go and check out everything that this person has provided and see, I didn't go through all of them, but I thought that was an amazing resource. So he, he had a space in my slideshow for that. So, okay. And um, habit number six, I'm gonna try to wrap this up. Uh, synergize, involve individuals with disabilities in user testing to gather feedback and insights. So there's many testers, you can find blind testers, uh, low vision testers, it's totally different. Um, don't think just because you have a blind tester that they're helping out with the low vision or the low, vice versa. It's a totally different experience for, for people. Um, deaf testers, uh, people with cognitive aging or learning disabilities. So if you have a relative or someone you know to help you, that's fine. Um, you can also, you can hire people. This uh, particular organization, Access Works, they have, uh, you know, people available that you can hire or whatever, even if it's your friend or your neighbor, just offer to pay them for their service because they are working for you. They're actually doing a job. So, so it does help to have people who actually have these disabilities to test the sites because you can get far by testing using your browser extensions and using uh, any of the screen readers and things like that and tabbing. But when you see a person who is really blind going to a website, it's a definitely a different experience. And they're seeing things that are really baked in that maybe you have to question the theme you've chose. So engage with accessibility communities and participate in discussions to exchange knowledge and best practices. So there's things like meetup, of course, there's a, a, many accessibility meetups for WordPress. 
um, a couple of them I have listed in my links. There's also uh, just a general WordPress meetup. There's always a discussion may come up about accessibility. It comes up in my meetup a lot. Then WordPress Accessibility Day, that's coming up in September, September 27th through 28th, it's 24 hours of sessions just on WordPress and accessibility, and it's amazing. And you can also go to the website and see the archives from the past years. And then there's the WordCamp. Um, you can go to wordcampcentral.com or wordcamp.org, um, WordCamp and then you can actually see if any word camps are coming up in your community and you can go and there's all, so many accessibility talks are happening at word camps so uh, finally habit number seven sharpen the saw stay updated with the latest WCAG guidelines and techniques um, you can do that by once again just going to meetups going to uh, talking to people um, like watching this webinar or other webinars that you that you see on accessibility. Uh, regularly review your content for accessibility compliance and make necessary updates. Um, you know, sometimes you have someone helping you out and they didn't know they were supposed to do alt text on the images and you forgot to tell them. You might want to go back in and check that out. Um, or, you know, I, I have clients that I do maintenance on their websites and help them out and then they'll put things in for themselves. And as a, a person who's doing maintenance, I'll kind of do a sweep and see if there is some issues. Uh, continuously learn about new assistive technologies, accessibility features and emerging best practices. And here I have a couple of web uh, plugins that I wanted to suggest. There's Joe Dolson's web uh, WordPress accessibility plugin. Now you may think that isn't that like an overlay, and it, it is not. What it is is a um, a plugin that you'll put on your uh, install on WordPress, and it will give you alerts about some certain things that you need to do. Uh, like one one obvious one is um, that it will let you know if you haven't put a alt description on an image as soon as you like uh, upload it. So it does that. It does a few other things uh, under the hood that aren't going to get in the way of an assistive technology. It's kind of almost putting training wheels on it. So, and it's actually not supposed to stay on your website. So I heard that from Joe himself. It's, it's supposed to be a tool for you to make it more accessible. And then you're supposed to take it off. Um, another one that I really love, and it's very helpful for people, it's called Screen Reader only text um, or screen reader text format actually. And what this one does, it helps you with that read more, get more info or click whatever in case the button that you're using really has to only have two words on it because you don't want a whole paragraph on there. Um, you can uh, totally, okay, I think there might be yeah, here we go. Here's what will happen. Um, like I have this big button here. And um, if you, it comes, uh, you can find it in this drop down. In fact, we can go over and check it out. Let's see here. I think I want this one. Hello world, here we go. So I have it installed here. Um, so I'm showing you a few things that are happening here. Um, the alt text is missing. That's Joe telling me that <laughs> because I have his plugin installed. So I'll know that I'll have to go over here and put alt text in for this image. Okay. And then for this one, it says get more info. But I want to say about the jazz singing class. And then I'll just highlight that. And I'll go screen reader only. And when I click out, it's done. And what it's done is it's put that into little HTML tags and made it disappear from the front of the website, but it's being able to be picked up by a screen reader. So you can do this with all the buttons that you have so that people understand so that when they pull off all the links or, uh, um, on this, and this is a link disguised as a button, by the way, buttons only um, make things happen on the page, okay? On the page. 
and a link takes you to another page. So that's a distinct difference and um, people who are using assistive technologies and stuff, they actually depend on that too. Uh, so if you have buttons like, like looks like links and you wanna make them more expressive, you can use this plugin, it's amazing. And I think with that, I might be done with this. I think I have time for questions because I don't want to run out of time for questions. <laughs> so um, if we wanted to turn it over to questions, we can, Courtney. Yeah, um, we actually didn't seem to have any um, questions. There was a lot of chatter. We shared links. Thank you, everyone, who also shared links in, in the chat. Um, I'm scrolling back, but I don't see anything tagged question. Um, does anyone have any questions? Please, please feel free to just type in the chat. <laughs> there, um, I, I think the very first question very early on uh, was the um, if you're going to demonstrate um, accessibility um, features in WordPress. Um, you just demonstrated the plugin. Um, okay. But so right yeah, here. Well, okay, this is mm -hmm. what we're gonna go. We're gonna go in um, and get. Um, let me go back here. One of the things that I let's see here. Let me go back to the slide. Yeah, accessibility features in the editor uh, specifically. Yes, because I that that is what I want. I want to go and get. Um, I should have had this page already done. Uh, <laughs> I want to go and grab the Google. There we go. So that is actually linked. <laughs> or it was linked. Okay, let me. All right, you know, I was, I thought I had that linked and I didn't. All right, let's go in. All right, so. The, effect, the accessibility features are, okay, when you go in, so a lot of things that are accessibility features are not actually features of the, the, the hardware, the, so, the software. It's actually your thinking of how you're putting your content in, okay? Because what I wanted to get across is that you don't have to actually do too much technical stuff. So if you're writing a, an article, you have to make sure that that is, the, and this is like the key stuff because these things that I'm gonna show you right now are the things that will get you flagged. So the title of the post is an H1, okay? So if we were to actually start as another section, we're gonna use the heading and we're going to go to an H2. And we can talk about jazz singers. Okay. And if we were putting a little content in here, so I'll just duplicate that. And then we wanted to, start after, we wanted to, um, List maybe Ella Fitzgerald as one of those jazz singers because that's what we're talking about right here. We're going to do a heading and we're going to make that a number three. We'll just do an edit. And then we would talk about her. So, right now, what we've done is extremely important. It's like it's so more important than a, like a lot of the things that you think are gonna be ridiculously technical and it's like, where do I begin? It's these things like this that are causing the issue. So that like you wanna structure those headings. You don't wanna use them as like, oh, I like the H5 or the H4 because it's in this turquoise font and I wanna like make my whole paragraph that color. You can't do that because like I showed you before, what I really wanted to do in this talk was to show you the effect of you what what how it reverberates out from what you do so when you think now about this 
heading structure, you're going to think of somebody using a, a technological device to read and they've pulled them all out. So if they're pulling out your entire paragraph in turquoise font, it's not going to be helpful. So there's things like that. Then there's like, like I said here, the alt description. You're, this is placed here in the sidebar and you will put a description of the image. It's not a place to put your business name, anything like that. It's to describe the image for people so that they can get some context as it illustrates the content that you are have written, okay? And then, like I said before, you want to use links that are expressive and descriptive. Um, I can't go into things like, should you put the right aria or like label for an HTML? Because then we're getting into something that's actually theming. I want you to be able to go in to the editor itself and just put your contents in and know with confidence that you're not doing something that's going to be like causing issues. And a lot of it is really just not, it's, it's like the alt description, heading, links, no centered text. Maybe if it's a line or two, that's great. But having a, a website with completely centered text everywhere, that's not going to be helpful because people who have you know, low vision or have to like blow up, like zoom in 400%, the, the text doesn't stop at the same point on the left when they're reading. So it's, it's hard for people with cognitive issues as well. Um, the colors that you're choosing. So there's also if if you, there one of the cool things in WordPress here is if you want to put a container. Let me go out here. I'll just use a container to do it. It's all our group. We'll use a group, and I'm going to choose just one. And I'm going to put some text in there and I'm going to put hello. Okay. So now what I'm going to do for this can for this group is I'm going to make the text white. Now I've been alerted that this color combination may be hard for people to read. It's not going to stop me, but I've been alerted. So that is an accessibility um, the tool that's in WordPress. Also, if I decide to put the background, now I'm fine. But if I decided to make this like a faint gray, that's still good because I haven't gotten the message, but if it went here, no. Okay, so that, that simple things like that, that you can do. Um, So was, uh, did, was there anything else that someone wanted to see? Or did I cover? Um, you covered what's, yeah, what's built in to, to work for us. Yeah. Um, do you have a couple more questions that came up um, okay. from John? Uh, how much weight do accessibility provisions add to the site? How much weight, like, like in page load? No, I think that might be my guess. <laughs> okay, so here it is, guys. A, a straight static HTML website mm -hmm. done with semantic HTML is accessible. If you are like the most skillful HTML person, you know about all of the ver um, attributes for every tag, it's accessible. And that's the fastest website you can get. And it's like the fastest. So it's the HTML that is makes this website accessible. Now, if you want to make an inaccessible website, start adding things to it. So add a page builder that has all the whistles and bells and you can't pull out what you just need. Um, add some JavaScript thing that's sliding things in all from left and right. Um, add content, <laughs> like I just showed you, that is not acceptable. It's all what you add. It really is. I think there's this assumption that you have a website and then you have to do a whole bunch of stuff to make it accessible. No, you have to take the things away to make it accessible. You have to take things away. You really do. And I, that was an epiphany for me. And that was, I think that happened like six months ago when I realized, wait a minute, mm -hmm. 
everything I added made this worse. And so that's what you have to think that way. Think about what's been added to get in the way of accessibility, not what you need to add to make it accessible. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah okay. that sounds like it addressed uh, John's question. Um, uh, Jean has a question um, for Joe's alt text missing warning. If the image was decorative and we used um, no content inside the quotes, would the warning still appear? Yeah, I think it would. I think it would. I, I don't think Joe can figure that much out if he knew. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't actually put decorative inside the quotes because it's going to be read out. So mm. remember this, there's a comfort level to this whole thing too. So think about the person who has to hear decorative, 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 or or like you don't want to also repeat the same thing in the same image, you know, like you can, you, you just have to think, uh, you have to think outside the box in some ways. You have to think about how, what you've done lands on somebody. And, and and that's what I feel, that's why I wanted to, to do an out more of an outside picture. And that's why this talk actually got changed from the other one, which does do specific seven things you can do with WordPress. So you can go to WordPress TV and choose either one of these talks and you're gonna get what you need. I really, after, since doing that last talk, I really feel like it needs to be expressed what, what is happening to other people when you're not doing the accessible stuff. Because a lot of people are feeling it's something they have to do, they are putting out the effort. And it's not really about that. It's like the people are putting out the effort just to surf the web. Imagine COVID when the web was only 1.8%, now it's like 2.2% accessible. <laughs> so, I mean, we were all in our homes trying to do things from the internet and then people got completely, you know, without, uh, with complete understanding, desperate and just threw websites up so they could sell their things and or people could order food, but they didn't think about accessibility. And so like those, most of those websites were useless, absolutely useless. Um, so for someone who is who needed to order pizza and they can't see or couldn't use a keyboard. So that's what I'm that's why I really wanted to do here. And um and uh if if someone was expecting the other things, um I do have that alternative talk to you, just let you know. Thank you. Um, it looks like, um, yeah, Eagle shared a link um, in the chat about decorative images. Uh, so yeah, that's a good resource. Thank you. Um, oh, and by the way, can I just say that Eagle has a resource yeah. that's really amazing too. And I wish he put yeah. that in the chat. He has collected a lot of um, uh, informative stuff about just WordPress in general. And he has a whole accessibility section with a bunch of links, amazing links. Mm -hmm. I think we have a couple more questions before I know we're getting towards the end of the hour. So um, it's okay if folks need to leave. <laughs> we're, we'll, um, do you have another couple of minutes, Alicia? To um, I do. To take I was a nervous. That's okay. I was like trying to close it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no worries. Um, so um, Angela asks, uh, what if you have an image that needs two or three sentences? Should that go in a description or an alt tag? an image that needs two or three sentences okay all right so let's play around so see this isn't really about tools in wordpress you need to understand this is about strategy so here's what you can do and you can do this with an anything any kind of um page thing that allows you to have a caption and alt description and then just the words so you gotta think could part of this go in the caption under the image and then i've already um, like what part can I caption for everyone and then just elaborate more in the alt text because the caption will be read by the screen reader too. And then, then what more can I say when I'm writing the content to kind of like pull that image in. And so really what accessibility and especially the alt description is asking you to be creative and think differently about your images about how they actually engage with your content. And so when you have the caption is something that you can use too, then it kind of opens up more breathing space. <laughs> but if you have to put 
a couple of sentences in for the alt description and it's vital that you do that, then that's the case. I've seen some people do an amazingly cool thing where there's a link and it says um, a detailed description of image. And someone has an option to click to get that detailed description of the image. So you can put a little short one and then in the caption, maybe you can put detailed description. And it goes off to like another detailed description page, or um, I'm uh, afraid to say pop up because sometimes those are not accessible. They can be, <laughs> but like if you just grab the random plugin to do it. Um, but yeah, that's an option. So it's like really kind of have to strategize and think. And this was part of that learning and going to other communities that are talking about accessibility. There's no, see, those plugins and overlays are making. I guess people get the idea that there's some technical boom and we've got it. You turn something on and then maybe I just have to learn that without the overlay. It's not, it's like immerse yourself in like, like this experience and, and learn. It's like putting yourself in someone else's shoes. That's what accessibility really is. It's putting yourself in someone else's shoes through your own content as you're creating, imagining that. We all did that when we picked our niche for our, 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 our um, websites. But now we have another niche. We have people who want to just get there, you know, <laughs> who happen to be in your professional niche. So, and and here's the other one. This is for all of us. This is not just for people who have disabilities because any one of us could end up with a disability at any point. And to me, I think it would be worse to have already been access to all the web and then have it taken away. Then I'd know what I was missing. So you're doing this for yourself and your family and everybody. So it's not really, it's not something for those people or whatever. It could be any of us. We're all vulnerable to this. And I'm not like doom and gloom, because <laughs> but I'm just saying, don't, don't think you, that it's not for everyone. It really is. And uh, the other one I like to put in is that SEO and accessibility are absolute cousins. So if you do accessibility right, your SEO is just perfect. Okay. Not perfect, but it's good. It's pretty good. <laughs> the good step. Yes. <laughs> so Eagle, um, Eagle did share um, some more resources um, as well as Sally. So thank you both for sharing you, those links. Um, if you want to save, if anyone wants to save the chat um, from this meeting, it'll save all the links in there for you and everything. If you click the um, the three dots in the chat, which is uh, for the selection for more, um, you can then click save chat, and then um, that will save a text file to uh, your computer, and you can access all the chat as well as all the links that were shared in there. Um, so I think that was it for questions, um, and uh, I think then we're, we're ready to wrap up here. So I um, wanted to, to thank Alicia for being here today and um, sharing her presentation. Um, and as she mentioned, there are other um, versions of this talk available on WordPress TV. Um, I'll be sharing a link to the today's recording as well as all the, um, the, the resources that Alicia shared um, in on the meetup group, um, maybe by tomorrow. Uh, so we, we tried to post the recordings within 24 hours. Um, so here I have Alicia's um, contact info here, um, if you would like to reach out. Um, and then um, I think, Oh, yeah. One other thing I wanted to mention, um, here's my contact info. If you are interested in creating resources for Learn WordPress, um, you can get in touch either on the, the Making WordPress Slack or on, um, on social media. Um, and finally, um, thank you for learning along with us. Uh, and I'm going to repeat it again. You can find more educational resources at learn.wordpress.org. Uh, once again, thank you, Alicia, and thank you, everyone, for being here today. Thank you. Bye.